Hello and welcome to today's video and Smartsheet form tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a form in Smartsheet and all of the different tips and tricks to ensure you get all of the information and data that you need from the form that you set up. So I've loaded up my account here. Um, I've navigated to uh, the browse on the left hand side and I've gone to my sheets section. And what I've done here is I've just created a brand new sheet. I right clicked, I click grid, and I've just renamed that as Smartsheet Form Tutorial. Now, when I open this up, as I say, it's a brand new sheet, so it's completely blank. So as you'll see, we've got our primary column and all of the corresponding columns here. Obviously no data in here at the moment. Now, when it comes to forms, I think first and foremost, I would just like to say that there's two main ways of creating them. So you can, you can start by basically specifying all of your different data points within the sheet itself, or you can do that in the form functionality. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute as well. Personally, I would recommend creating your columns first and foremost, uh, or data points within the sheet itself, and then creating the form after. Personally, I find that much easier um, and it's a little bit quicker as well. Um, but as I say, if you forget a column, you can always add it in the form later and I will show you how to do that as well. So first and foremost, what you basically need to do is rename your column headings. So I'm gonna quickly create an example form for a, a project intake request. So in this, this context, we're an organization and we're looking to set up new project toolkits um, as projects come on board. And in order to do that, we need some kind of way of getting these requests and then setting up the templates that we need. So I'd start off, I'm gonna change the primary column. So edit column properties, and I'm gonna rename this to project name. And don't worry, I'm not gonna do too many columns. It won't take too long. But I just wanna give you an example of, of some of the columns that you want. And, and just bear in mind, this is, this is an example. You can use any a form for various different contexts. When you want to use a form essentially is when you want data within a sheet and you want to collect that data from perhaps an external stakeholder, maybe somebody who doesn't have a, a smart sheet license, or you just want to, an easier way to basically collect sheet, uh, to collect data, to collect sheet. That's not what we're looking to collect. Right, third column, we're gonna call this region. And we want this to be a drop down, so you can only select one as well. So we're going to have the three different regions. We're going to have EMEA, APAC, and Americas. And what I want to do here, I'm going to cap, make it all caps, and I'm going to restrict to drop down values only. My fourth column, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do the business justification. That would that would make sense in our use case. Here, so I double left click there. That's another tip. So you can right click and go edit column properties, or you can double left click and it will just bring that up automatically. So we've got business justification. Let's put a financial benefit. And we want that to be, we'll leave it as text number for now. We're going to put a, um, next we're going to put email of submitter. And we are going to put date raised and we'll have that as an auto number system and we're going to do that by created date now actually email of submitter what we can do here so this is a, a quick tip for you if we auto number this and we do this created by it will automatically capture it without the individual needing to specify their information. They won't need to, to jot it down. So that's actually a handy way of just kind of reducing the number of fields required in the form. So I'm just looking at these, we've got everything we need for now. Um, let's actually, one, one more, I'm actually gonna add in project manager and I wanna put that in here. Okay, so here's our, here's our sheet. These are, these are the data points we want to collect. Now we want to, collect this information via a form. So to do that and to set up the form, you've probably seen the link up here. You basically click the form link and then here from this from this uh, drop down, we want to create a form. Now, if I click manage forms, you'll see that nothing's there because obviously this is a brand new sheet and we haven't created any forms as of yet. 
Um, so I'm actually going to go back. I could have just clicked that, but I'm going to go back just to show you, you know, what it takes to the same place. But create form. So as you'll see, it's automatically populated via the columns in the sheet. It's it's so much quicker, in my opinion. I, I just find it a lot easier, and and visually you can see what it's going to look like in the sheet when it's created. So there you go. We've almost got a basic sheet set up, but. Let's just run through this this kind of interface and what you can do here as well, because there's a lot more things you can do and it's good to know how to do this just in case you did want to create it within the, the form interface. So first and foremost, I'd probably say, um, I'd probably go into the settings first and foremost and just run through these just to, you know, get that general look and feel of what you want to create. So we've got a side by side form at the moment. Um, I actually want to have a vertical for this example. Now we've got some security options here. So here we go. So do you want to require people to log into Smartsheet to access the form? It depends on your stakeholders and who's going to be using it, but you know, it's a good option to have. You can put a capture on it as well to reduce spam. Um, and then you've got some options here. So what do you want to happen when the form is submitted? So you can put a display, uh, a confirmation message. So when somebody enters the form, they're going to get, you know, this, whatever you type here. We can reload the same form, so somebody could enter basically another project if they've got another request, and that can be handy um, depending on your, your context. Um, and we can send the user to a link as well. So, you know, we could revert them over to once they've um, created or raised their sheet or entered the data, then they're going to go somewhere else online. And that might be useful depending on your organization. I'm going to put the confirmation message because I think that's uh, in this case, that'll be kind of that work for my for my use case. Now, new submission should appear. Now, this is basically where, so when you saw that blank sheet a moment ago, um, you can have the, the new entries added to the bottom of the sheet or the top of the sheet. I like the bottom of the sheet. That keeps it in a chronological order. order. And then the send email of submission. So here, basically, you get uh, an email that notifies you if you've submitted something. You can have that on or off, depending on your needs. So we've got this set up. I'm gonna, I, will, I should probably save, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna head back into the form because we haven't really changed anything. Um, now, if you click the open form, then you'll notice, um, okay, he's asking me to save it, how, how interesting. Right, if I do that, what it's gonna do is gonna open up in a new URL and it's gonna show you what the form looks like. So you've got a kind of real-time example of what it looks like when it's, um, when it's been created. And of course, if we make some changes, so if I go back into the settings and make a side-by-side, -side, then if we, go back to the form, let me close that off and open the form, you'll see the side by side view. So, you know, it's a quick way of seeing what, you know, what changes you make that open form, you can see what you've done and what it's going to look like. But back to the, the kind of editing the form itself. So up here, um, this is the name of the sheet. So if you wanted to change this, then you can either change it in here on the right hand side. And um, I think if you enter if you enter a description, then you'll see that drop below. So you could put, um, oh, we don't want to listen to any music. I shouldn't have clicked that. I'll have to listen to that later. Um, but if, um, so if we enter the description, this could be, so please enter uh, the information, uh, please enter project request details down below. You could put something like, if you have any issues, any issues with this form, such as music playing, please send an email to etc. You get the kind of idea. You don't have to do that, um, and you can also take take the, the title off as well and, and the description off. Um, but you know that's just an option. But as I say, you can change the title here. So um, example, just to show you what that looks like. So you can change the title in here as well, or change the title of, of the, or the name of the underlying sheet. And that will update here as well. So when it comes to actually editing the form itself, if you highlight over the different categories and, or I should say data points, you have the option to move them up and down. So let's put project name second, for instance, if you wanted to kind of move that around, it's also a drag and drop. If you wanted to, to move it that way, you've got the delete button on the right hand side. If you no longer require that, piece of data on the on the form itself. Um, and then as you'll see here, this is this is popped up the field setting. So every field in the form, you can change the setting. So you can change the label. So that's essentially what's going to appear on the 
uh, you know, you can basically change the, the, the title of that p particular field type. You can put some help text in. So please specify the name you personally would like the project title to be. That's just obviously an example, um, a bit of a silly one, but um, and I can't spell, but that's the kind of idea here. Um, you can just give some extra context and, and make sure you get the data that you need. Um, you've then got these options, so required and hidden. So you'll see when you hit required, that gives you that little asterisk. So what that basically means is if someone tries to submit the form without entering data in that field, it, will be, it won't go through. They'll, they'll need to do that in order to submit the form. So that can basically make sure you get all of the information you need. Um, it, it's, it's a real prompt and I would recommend it for certain things. So for instance, we can't set up a project without a project manager, so I'm going to make that required. Hidden, as the name suggests, it won't be on the form anymore. I mean, there's no point really having it on there, but the, but you know, sometimes you might want to hide it for a particular field for a week and then, you know, return it after a period of time. So that hidden functionality can be quite useful. Um, and then you've got some validation here as well. So, you know, that's really, you know, what kind of information do you want to, to obtain within this, um, within this, this particular field. So I'm gonna put no validation. And then the display is literally how it looks. So a single line text box or a, or a multi-line, and you can basically change this to whatever you need. So the, the beauty of adding a multi-line text box, it gives the submitter of the form or whoever's going to be entering data to basically, you know, the bigger the, the text box, the more data it looks like you need to add. So it just makes, it just makes you sometimes get more data. And, and if you're looking for more data, that's very, very useful. Now I've got some logic. So with the logic, it basically means, you know, if you, it, it's, it's basically, setting up the form to work in a particular way, depending on your needs. So if somebody enters something in particular here, then it could make them, you know, push them onto another field, for instance. So that's just an, an idea. I'm not gonna run through the logic now, um, but for instance, if I click that, then yeah. So when the project name contains test, then show the following field. So basically the logic is a way to create a more interactive form or some or obtain the needs, you know, to make it more useful to whoever's um, basically submitting or working in the form itself. So that's really the, the, the premise of a form. Um, you can, um, I believe you can, so up here, I just should quickly note active and inactive. Basically it means if, if it basically means whether the URL is gonna be accessible um, once you once you share it, um, and if you click the share button, then you're going to get a link. Um, you can share it via email um, to individuals directly. You can get be, you can be CC'd on it as well. You can have a um, so I'm a trial user at the moment. So just for transparency, I'm actually a I use Smartsheet in my day to day. I'm a project manager. Um, but I had to create a trial to protect my company's data. So this is a brand new trial account just to show you the the. Um, the functionalities of the platform. Um, but because of this, I can't get the, the link to, you know, that, that part of the functionality is closed off to me because I'm not on a paid subscription, so to speak, on this trial account. So assuming you've got an account with Smartsheet, then basically you, you can act, you can get the link um, here and then you can, you know, ping that around to your colleagues or whoever needs it once, once your form's set up. Or embed is very, very similar. You could embed this on like a company site or, you know, your uh, intranet or something like that. But yeah, this, this email basically enables you to share the link to the form to whoever you'd like, and you've got the subject and the message, so they'll receive an email with whatever you specify here. Now, lastly, before we leave, I did mention at the start, so I've, I've gone in and I've basically created this form within the, the sheet interface itself, but you don't have to do that, and you can actually do it from the form. So let's, um, let's say, you know, we need, we need another... Um, you know, we need another, we another, another, another field that wasn't, you know, present in the in the in the sheet itself. So what you could do here is you could put in a. I should add that here. Oh no, sorry, this is a header. Sorry, I've I've, I've confused the the functionality here. If you needed a new field, you would literally click this button here, and then that's basically you're gonna you're gonna get that kind of same um, column functionality that you would get in the sheet. So for here, I could put. Um, I could put in something like, uh, let's put um, target date. So target date, change that to a date and restrict dates only. So target date for project start. Okay. And you'll see that has been added somewhere. I, I, what have I, what? Here we go, sorry, it's come up here. Now I just need to drag it in. So we've got that in here now and we want that to be required. 
So, you know, that's that's very, very useful um, to just add fields if you've missed any off. Now, you can also add headers. So that's a way of breaking up your form. So this could be something like project information. This could be something like um, personnel info. I can't spell today. Information. I think that's how you spell per personnel. But you get the idea. So you, you can have, I need to create another heading here because I've deleted the other one. Oh no, I didn't, apologies. So we've got project information, personnel, but there's just a way of breaking up the form with headers. And you've also got things like dividers as well. And that can make things look visually quite nice. So do you know that that's the kind of idea behind those. And then file upload is really, really useful. That can, you can basically have this and you can have this as a required field as well, but you can get people to add um, attachments. So this could be something like a, I, I don't know, like a, a project charter or something like that in this context, but any information that may support their their submission of the form. So I'm going to save this. Oh, it looks like it's already saved and I'm going to open it. So this is the completed form that we have here today. So I hope that was useful. That's how to basically create a, a form in, in Smartsheet. Um, if you wanted to change any of these columns, then you can, as I say, you can always go back. So this is where the form's now created. Um, if I click that, it's going to open the link and you've got the the options here. You can duplicate, you can look at the properties, you can deactivate, you can delete, etc. But if you wanted to change some of the column types, so say you wanted the um, project manager to be a list, then you would just go into back into the sheet and edit the column properties, and then you could go for your drop down in that example. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to change any of the column types, then just go back into the sheet. So as I say, I hope this video is useful. If it was, please hit the like button. That tells me it was, and it. You know, it gives me, um, it makes me want to create more videos for you guys about Smartsheet and project management in general. Uh, and do subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And with that said, I hope you have an excellent day.